Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 1.14 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, this problem states the following. It says a particle of mass m is in the state that you can see here. The wave function is a e to the minus small a m x squared over h bar plus i t, where big and small a are both real constants. First, we want to normalize and find a, then we want to find which potential this wave function solves the Schrodinger equation for. And then we want to find the expectation values of x, x squared, p and p squared, and see if they satisfy uh, or if it is consistent with the uncertainty principle, which it better be, right? Um, so let's begin with power a, simply normalizing. So to normalize, we say one is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the uh, density, the probability density of dx, right, of this dx. So let's plug it in, we get minus infinity to infinity. And what is this? This is our wave function conjugate. So we get a e to the minus a times mx squared divided by h bar minus i t. And then we have to multiply by a e to the minus a m x squared over h bar plus i t and all of this dx. Okay, so that is the integral that we want to solve. So this would be, uh, we can take the a squared outside. So a squared integral from minus infinity to infinity. The complex parts, they cancel out, right? Uh, you can separate this into two different exponentials. They add up and they end up being e to the zero, which is one. And then we have e to the minus two a m x squared over h bar and dx. Now this may look very nasty, but this is simply a Gaussian integral. We know uh, its value, right? This is very important that you know, you have to know this. This appears all the time in this course and well in other ones as well. So if you have e to the minus bx from minus infinity to infinity, very, uh, sorry, b squared, uh, this is very important. It has to go from minus infinity to infinity. This is the square root of pi over b. Okay, so you have to know this. You cannot just calculate this or come up with this result in a test, right? It's very hard to uh, come up with that result. You have to do it numerically or with like some very weird tricks. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend that you do it. Uh, just learn this uh, method. So if we take b to be 2am over h bar, we can see that this integral is simply the square root of pi divided by 2am h bar. So if this is equal to one, that means that a has to be equal to two a m divided by pi h bar to the one fourth power. All right, so that is a. Now they ask for what potential function v does psi satisfy the Schrodinger equation? Well, this may sound difficult, but all that we need to do is write down the Schrodinger equation and plug everything in and solve it. So we have second derivative with respect to x plus the potential times the wave function. This is equal to i h bar times the time derivative of our wave function. So we need to calculate the time derivative and both of the spatial derivatives and then plug them in. Okay, so if our, actually let me maybe move the, this thing so I don't have to rewrite the wave function. So the spatial derivative, so let's begin with the first spatial derivative. This is simply, a, right, since it's an expo exponential function, when we take the derivative, the exponent is unchanged, and then we multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which would be minus a m divided by h bar times the derivative of 2x, which is simply, uh, sorry, of x squared, which is simply 2x. And now we want to take the derivative of that. So then we have a, the exponent is still there, m x squared h bar plus i t. Okay. And we will have, first of all, right, if we simply derive this again, we will end up with minus 2a m x divided by h bar squared. And then we have plus this thing again, e to the minus a m x squared h bar plus i t. And now this is unchanged. 
and we multiply now by the derivative of this part, right? So we would have minus 2am over h bar. So the derivative, we can write it like this. We can factor out this a, e, blah, 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 which is simply the wave function, right? This and that, that is simply the wave function. So d squared psi, dx squared, that is simply the wave function times, then we have this thing squared, which would be four a squared m squared x squared divided by h bar squared plus uh, that would be, sorry, not plus, rather minus, minus 2am divided by h bar. So there we go. That is the uh, spatial derivatives. Now, what about the time derivatives? So the time derivative, uh, this would be simpler. Let's take a look at the function, right? The function is simply that thing right there. So if we take the time derivative, we get i times a e to the minus a, blah, 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 right? It's basically just this, it's a lot simpler, right? So this is simply uh, i times psi, <laughs> okay? So uh, nothing too crazy there, that was relatively simple. So now we plug everything in. So uh, in this part right there, Uh, so this would give us minus a i times, well, and times the exact same thing. So times psi. All right. So let's now plug everything back in. So here we have i h bar times the time derivative, which we know is minus a i psi. Then we have the spatial derivative here, this thing right there. And um, that's going to take up some more space. So actually, I think I'm just going to go to the next line. So minus h bar over 2m. And then we have 4a squared, m squared, x squared, h bar squared minus 2am over h bar. All of this times psi plus v psi. This is equal to now we have minus here and minus because of the i squared. So we end up with a h bar times psi. Okay. Um, so now let's see, uh, we have to multiply through and a few things will cancel out. So h bar squared here, we cancel out that. So we end up with two a squared m. Then we have uh, this x squared, the h bars cancel out um, two m. Okay, I used everything. And in this term, we have plus, oh, this is negative. And then two m's cancel out the a will still be there. So we get h bar a times psi, and this is also times psi. Okay, plus v psi, this is equal to a h bar psi. So here we can see that this and this, they cancel out. So we end up with v psi, this is equal to 2 a squared m x squared psi. So this means that our potential as a function of x is simply 2a squared m times x squared. So there we go. That is the potential uh, for which this wave function is the solution to the Schrodinger equation. Now we want to go for part C. So in part C, we want to find the expectation values. So the expectation values, let's begin with the expectation value of x. So this would be right from the definition, integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times a squared e to the minus two a, a what, what was I already forgot about it. <laughs> I already forgot it's minus two a m x squared over h bar. So minus two a m x squared over h bar, right? The it's they cancelled out just like before. So this is what we have to solve. And uh, fortunately for us, we don't have to do anything because and again, I'm always stressing this out. This is odd, this is even, this is a symmetric interval. So the integral is zero. There we go, no need to calculate anything, right? That's why you always have to be paying attention. You, this is going to happen so, so, so very often. And I, I really cannot stress this enough. You will save yourself so much time if you learn to recognize this and always pay attention. Whenever you have a symmetric interval, just quickly check if your integrand is odd 
or perhaps even odd is usually more useful because it's going to be zero. Okay, now we have um, the integral, uh, sorry, the expectation value of x squared, which will be integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared a squared e to the minus 2am x squared divided by h bar dx. Now here I will use another timeless classic. Uh, this is uh, my favorite way of solving this integral. Again, another integral that uh, sh shows up very frequently. So what I like to do is just say, okay, so 2am h bar, I will call beta and I will treat this beta uh, as just some variable parameter, right? So I, I will rewrite this as integral from minus infinity to infinity, x squared, I will put my a squared outside, e to the minus beta x squared dx. And now I will uh, show you the following, pay attention to this. If we had, right, e to the minus beta x squared, and we were to take the derivative with respect to beta, what we would get is minus x squared e to the minus beta x squared, which is almost the same as here, except for this minus sign. So if we multiply by a minus sign, we have the exact same thing. So we can now rewrite this, right? This is a, a very, very useful trick. Uh, we, you can rewrite this as minus d d beta e to the minus beta x squared dx. Okay, you can now take the uh, derivative outside of the integral. So you get a squared d d beta times the, der the integral, sorry. But you already know what the integral is. It is square root of pi over beta, right? So we can now separate this and, oh, we forgot about the minus sign there. Um, so we get minus a squared square root of pi. And now we have uh, this derivative of beta. So we have to take the derivative with respect to beta of beta to the minus one half. So calculating that, we get minus one half beta to the minus three halves. Okay, so the minus signs, they cancel out. So we end up with a squared square root of pi divided by two, and then beta to the minus three halves. So that is one over beta to the three halves, but beta is 2am h bar. So we end up with h bar over 2am to the three halves. Okay, and what was a squared, right? Let's plug that back in. So a squared, uh, there it is. A squared is the square root um, of 2am pi h bar. So a squared, so it is the square root of 2am, okay, I already forgot, <laughs> I'm terrible, 2am uh, pi h over pi h bar. So 2am pi h bar inside of a square root times the square root of pi over two and times, I will just rewrite this in a very convenient way. So I will write this as square root of h bar 2am times h bar 2 a.m. Okay, so from here, this cancels out with most of this, the uh, square root of pi cancels out with that. So we end up with h bar over 4 a.m. Uh, that would be the expectation value of x squared. Now let's go for the expectation value uh, of the momentum. So the expectation value of the momentum, now don't worry actually calculating it. This is another very important trick. You can simply say, okay, this is m times the time derivative of the expectation value of position. And we know that the expectation value of position is zero. So this is also zero. And there we go. No worries, right? Don't even bother doing the integral. So let us now calculate the expectation value of p squared. So again, from its definition, we get minus infinity to infinity of, now we have psi conjugate times h bar over i, right? This is simply the operator or minus h bar, if you would like to write it like that, of the spatial derivative squared, right? So if you actually apply the squared here, you will have to, you have minus h bar squared times, right? You have to derive twice 
And what are we deriving? We are deriving the wave function, okay? The x. Okay, um, so what is this? Well, thankfully, we have already calculated the uh, second derivative of the wave function. It is uh, right here. We found it uh, earlier. So that derivative is simply the wave function itself times all of those nasty numbers or quantities. Okay, so we have to just plug it in. So we can factor out uh, this minus h bar squared. Then we have integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi conjugate. And now let's multiply it through. So we have psi conjugate times, let's see, uh, times psi for a squared, m squared, x squared, h bar squared. And then we have minus psi conjugate psi 2am. That does not look like an m. There. Uh, 2am over h bar and all of this dx. So as you can see, we have two integrals that we need to solve. Um, so we have minus h bar squared and now we have the two parts. So actually let's do it like this. So let's take all of those constants outside. Um, so we have 4a squared m squared over h bar squared and we integrate from minus infinity to infinity of this is the probability density squared x squared dx and here we have minus the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the probability density squared dx and we have still 2am over h bar okay now this integral we have already calculated right as you can see what we have there this is literally the definition of the expectation value of x squared so we don't have to worry about it much. We simply have to plug in the previous result that we already found. Um, this one, h bar over 4am. So this is h bar over 4am. And now this other integral, this one right there, uh, this is simply the integral uh, over all space of the probability density, which is one, right? This is normalized, so that is simply one. So we get minus 2am over h bar. Now here we can simplify things a little bit. So h bar, cance they cancel out. 4 cancels out with 4, a with a, m with m. So we end up with am over h bar minus 2am over h bar. So we end up with simply minus am over h bar. And now we multiply it through, right? We have this minus h bar here. So the minus cancel out. We end up with a m h bar, right? That is the expectation value of p squared. So now we can go for part d. Um, and let's begin finding the uncertainty of x. So this would be the expectation value of x squared minus the expectation value of x squared. And this expectation value, as we just saw, it is, uh, okay, I already forgot. I thought I could remember it. It is h bar over 4 am. So h bar over 4 am, and that is zero, so don't worry about it. The uncertainty in momentum, this will be p squared minus zero, right? The other one is also zero. I mean, the expectation value of momentum is zero. So this is the square root of a m h bar. So now we can just check the uncertainty principle. And we get square root of h bar squared divided by, uh, let's extend the square root, uh, divided by 4. So this is simply h bar over 2. So we see that we are <laughs> right at the uncertainty limit. So it does indeed hold. Um, so there we are. Uh, this is the solution to problem, what was it again? 1.14. As you can see, it's just a little bit of calculating, but if you use the trace that I'm showing you, uh, you don't have to solve every single integral and that makes things a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.